El Nino refers to a periodic warming of the equatorial waters in the central and east Pacific Ocean. Translated from Spanish, the name literally means little boy. It's actually a reference to the baby Jesus because fishermen off the coast of South America would typically notice the warmer waters around Christmas time. But El Nino's impact can last for many months and extend to a much larger portion of the globe. In March of 2015, scientists announced they were seeing signs of a weak El Nino, but as the year has progressed, it's been looking more like it could be the strongest since 1998, and that has important consequences for the weather. One way that scientists measure El Nino is by looking at sea level change in the mid-Pacific. As water warms, it expands. This causes the sea's surface to rise. Ocean-observing satellites can spot this change. Here, the satellite data show the change in sea level in the equatorial Pacific from January to July of this year. In some regions, the change is as much as half a meter. All that warmer water has a strong effect on the atmosphere, and if the warming trend continues, it could spell a turbulent winter and possible flooding along the west coasts of North and South America, similar to the winter of 1997-1998. That winter was the second warmest and seventh wettest for the U.S. in a century. Previous El Nino years caused flooding in Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador. Meanwhile, countries on the other side of the Pacific, including Indonesia, the Philippines, and Australia, tend to experience drought conditions during El Nino. If this year does bring a strong El Nino, we can likely expect warm, wet weather to the west coasts of North, Central, and South America. This could mean relief for California, which is deep in drought, but it could also increase the potential for severe weather elsewhere. <music>